Welcome back to Biz Morgan Uncensored. Last week I asked the award-winning singer Macy Gray what a woman was, and she gave me a simple, honest answer, which sadly triggered an avalanche of online abuse. She was branded an ignorant bigot and a transphobe, and eventually went on the NBC Today show in America to backtrack. Well, now the Church of England is struggling with that question too, announcing it has no official definition of a woman, that additional care is needed when trying to answer it. All very weird. Well, Lord Robert Winston, uh, the world-leading scientist in the field of fertility and reproduction, joins me now. Lord Winston, first of all, thank you for coming into the street. We, we've had some logistical issues, and we really appreciate you making the effort to still do the interview, so thank you. Uh, can you answer for me this very simple question? What is a woman? Well, of course, I can't answer the question anyway. A woman is a female, and the female is defined by the genes she has, essentially. She has two X chromosomes if she's human normally, and that would be, def that would be the de def definitive. It's probably easier to define a male. A male has specific masculine genes, which make us different from women. And uh, the, the, the female position is the default human position. That, that is to say, if there's no male genes there, you're born as a woman. But, I mean, dictionaries just simply say a woman is an adult female and a man is an adult male. Why is the world finding it all yes. so complicated now? It is really quite extraordinary. Basically, we are a cluster. Standing here, I'm a clump of about eight trillion cells, at least, each of which of those cells has got my maleness in it. I'm defined genetically. Every single cell has got those male genes. And that would apply to a woman who doesn't have those genes. So that what make, makes the difference. And we cannot escape the fact that we are gene genetically determined in this way. Of course, they define in terms of our shape, for example, whether they have breasts and all the rest of it. But essentially, that's what it amounts to. So when, when we have... Well, obviously, it's a complicated debate about uh, trans people, for example. And as I've regularly said, I, I completely support trans people's rights to fairness and equality. Uh, I just have an issue where you see women's rights get eroded in the stampede for trans rights. And I just don't think you can create a new unfairness and equality, for example, in, in sport and so on. Do you think that what we're doing as a society is conflating sex and gender, which is a point that J.K. Rowling and others have made strongly? Yes, Piers, of course you're absolutely right, and there's no question that we can change our gender. We can do it by mutilating ourselves. We can remove bits of our body and therefore change our shape and so on. But you can't change your sex because that is embedded actually in those genes in every cell in the body. That's the difference. And that really becomes a problem because, of course, occasionally you end up with, let's say, somebody who is born a male but then wants to be, become a female, so you can have that mutilating operation, for example. But then the question is, should they be allowed to compete in sport? Mm. That's a major problem because, of course, they still will have certain male characteristics which will likely to be give them an edge over other, 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 other women. And so that is where the problem really, I think, lies. And, of course, also the issue of just social behaviour in different situations, using toilets, using bathrooms, a whole right. range of issues like this, which understandably worry women. Well, I've got a woman here, Esther Graku, and you're listening to uh, Lord Winston. He's honestly one of the most eminent people in this field in the world. Yep. Are you satisfied with that definition I'm, of a woman? I'm more than satisfied. I'm, it physically pains me that we have to even define what a woman is yeah. because... Cavemen knew this, but apparently the most educated people in human history don't know it. So, you know, thank God he's here to save the day. <laughs> Lord Winston, I want to talk to you also about Elon Musk, who's a fascinating character. Uh, but he believes we have a, a huge population problem in the world, that actually we need more people, not fewer people. Do you agree with him? Well, do you know, I think Elon Musk is a, a wonderful individual in what he does, but actually he's not a biologist. And... Let's just be very clear. I don't think it matters very much because the world's population will not depend on Elon Musk, it will not depend on politicians, it will depend on the environment. And, of course, under the right circumstances, the population will certainly expand. If there is, as there are likely to be, starvation in other parts of the world, it will decrease. What I think we are seeing, though, is that rich countries, the population is certainly diminishing, but in poorer countries it isn't because they don't have the ability to control their births or they don't have... They need more people to support them in old age, for example. And that, I think, is a fundamental issue. But the world could support a lot more people if, in fact, we had better provision for a whole range of things like food supplies and so on. 
Are you happy that the political population of this country uh, is about to have one less member in Boris Johnson? <laughs> well, I don't understand the man, frankly. I mean, I think he's been unbelievable. It's really difficult to understand why he insists he wasn't going to resign, for example, and of course finally had to. It's very ignominious, and I don't think it's a great representation of our politics. It is so sad because there are so many really good politicians around, but we need people actually who have that sense of actually understanding what the limits are of what seems to be power. I think for some reason he almost became a sort of, he wanted in his mind a kind of dictator. Uh, this, this is an extraordinary thing for somebody who's a, con a conservative, who actually should be conserving the political arena. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, of any of the runners and riders left in the leadership race, do any of them excite you? Can you see yourself being happy with any of them as Prime Minister? Well, you know, to tell you the truth, I think this whole uh, uh, election process which the Conservative Party is going through is a pretty rubbish contest. I mean, how you can choose just two people out of a pool of 20 or 30 and then put them in front of another electorate, which also is hand-picked by yeah. their mo membership of that party, doesn't actually make complete sense. It isn't, I think, the way a democracy should work. Perhaps this can't get sorted out until finally we have a proper general election, and then we might have some I think common we need sense to... back. But I think the real... I, I'm sorry, Lord Wilson, we've yes, run out of time. Say, the... I could talk to you again a lot longer, and I would okay. love to soon, if you don't mind. But to leave it there, thank you very much for your time. No. Esther, thank you. Whatever you're up to, keep it uncensored. Good night.